Hey there friends and welcome back to another Blender tutorial, this time with piano. Thought it'd be funny if I just had a piano, you know, a piano I could play at whatever point. Either way, uh, that's not what this is about. So um, in this tutorial, or in fact tutorial series, I want to make this thing I've been hinting at over at the CG Matter channel, which is another uh, completely procedural game. This one, of course, is inspired by D Dino Run, that Chrome internet not working game. The art style is completely ripped, but with the twist that this is completely procedural. It's made with geometry nodes, and it's deterministic in the sense that it's basically a screensaver, right? Nobody actually plays plays this, it just has the logic down to be able to dodge these shurikens and it will know what to do on frame 1,000 and also frame 10,000 because it's all mathematical. So uh, because this is actually a lot to deal with, I thought let's separate it, uh, separate this into parts. So in this part, part one, uh, let's just make the ground, this basic animation that we can change the timing of, the density of these particles, um, stuff like that. And then we'll also do the timer, we'll do the blob, we'll do the shurikens, and we'll build up this effect. So uh, for the ground, basically what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be making this curve object that has this kind of not only procedural hilly thing, that has infinite detail, like we can keep generating generating new detail, um, but also it kind of looks pixelated, it's with the art style, and we also have these particles that look a bit uh, randomly scattered. That's what we're doing today, and uh, it looks like a lot of nodes, and that's because it is, so I, th I think we should get started. So, uh, Blender 3.1 Alpha, maybe download it, maybe use 3.0, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I'm using any new nodes, so you could risk it, <laughs> or just get the new one, either way. Let's begin. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, geometry nodes, we need to make the ground. So for our cube, we're gonna make a geo nodes group. This is where we're gonna be messing with it. I actually don't need the cube geometry and we can get rid of everything else. And let's just call this geo nodes so that we don't get confused. Not that, I mean, there's only one object, but either way, making the ground. First order of business, let's drop down a curve line that we're gonna distort and make it look hilly. So curve line, you connect it, you see that there's something, but there's nothing in the viewport. This is, of course, because it's pointed upwards. It's going up on the z-axis, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to make it start at negative 3 on the x-axis, positive 3 uh, for the other end point. So this is just going from left to right, negative 3 to 3, length of 6. And uh, we have a basic curve that we can see. Next order of business, how do we distort this thing? Well, right now it's only two points. It's one end point with a curve connected to another. I want more resolution to be able to distort. So I'm going to resample this curve. The more points, the better. For now, you want to imagine that there are like 50 points going um, alongside here. Uh, we can't see it, apparently, but the data is in, in here. You can see all 50 points and their uh, locations. Uh, once we have more points, we can actually start distorting this shit. So how do we do it? So I'm going to set position because I want to reset the position of each of these points uh, so that it changes on the y-axis. And I just want to add in a source of randomness. So let's use a noise texture for that. You can see if I connect this to like the offset or something, it's actually you know, doing something, because each of these points has some noise value, and then that's being offsetted. Okay, uh, to make this go only up and down, we want to constrain this thing to the y-axis, and I know, very technical, very mathematical, but you just got to go with it, because there's going to be so many nodes that I can't be here, like, explaining 10 minutes every day. There, there's a couple hundred nodes in this project, but hopefully it's all understandable. So, the noise, I only want it to affect the y-axis, the rest of these are going to be zero, and you can see if we do it on the offset, kind of works. Uh, what I actually want to do is I want to do this relative to position, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, but if we do it relative to position, we got to make sure we add it back. So the difference between offset and position is offset is saying, keep the original things, but just give it a bit of a nudge. Whereas with position, we're hard coding the actual vertex location of each of these, right? So I want to have the original position plus our distorted thing. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, okay, uh, so we have a hilly thing, but it doesn't really look the way we want it to. It's going too far up on average and a couple other things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of math to this noise before we add it to the position. So first thing I want to do is I want to add a negative number, subtract a positive. I want to bring it down so that it's kind of like halfway across this x-axis. So it doesn't go up too much. And we can also clamp it, uh, which means that if anything is negative, it's just going to get remapped to zero, which is kind of the look we're going for. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing we can do is we can increase the resolution. Okay, now we actually have a good kind of detailed looking hill situation. And finally, this is looking too chaotic, so bring down the scale. And that kind of looks the way you want it to. And of course, you could bump up the detail and all that, but I like the way it looks right now. So noise, 
it does a thing. <laughs> uh, but now what we need to do is we want it to animate going from left to right without adding extra detail. We just want it to kind of swipe across. And this is just as simple as modifying our source of randomness, right? We already have this noise texture. So it's already using our position coordinates. Nothing's going to change. It's using those by default. But if we take this and add a vector math and just move this on the x-axis, now we have this thing kind of sliding because our coordinate system that this noise is using is, is being shifted, which makes it look like it. Don't worry about it. We're shifting our coordinate system. We want to do this in a kind of useful way that doesn't like make us animate anything. So I'm just going to make a driver. The driver I always use, hash frame, that's going to be the frame number, divided by, let's say, 10 for now. And just like last time, we want to constrain it only to a single axis. So combine X, Y, Z, boop, and there you go. Let's take a little bit of a breather. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I love this little victory music. I'm going to start implementing it more. I think it's actually a good way to encourage a growth mindset. So uh, we have this uh, moving thing. Again, it works because we're changing our coordinate system relative to the X axis over time. We can make it go faster or we can make it go slower. By the way, we should save this. And I'm going to call it uh, Patreon because I have one. And you can uh, get the full one file there but whatever. Um, we have a shifting coordinate system that's shifting this noise texture, which is what's actually offsetting or actually, we, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even I'm getting confused. Actually, we are rewriting the position is what's happening so far. But uh, if we take this and try to render it, we're not going to see anything. I mean, if we disable overlays, because it's just a curve, it doesn't have any thickness. So let's take care of that next. So we have this whole group, um, basically, that is in charge of making this. I just want to take everything we've done so far and I want to convert it into a mesh that we can see. So curve to mesh, we want to give it some like a lathe. I don't, I don't know if that's the correct word, uh, but we want to like kind of fill it with something, kind of like we're sweeping. In Cinema 4D, it would be called sweeping. Uh, we're going to sweep it with a curve circle, so this thing actually has thickness. I mean, less thickness. We want to make it kind of small and kind of look like a line segment, but, you know, it's there, and we don't need high resolution for this. So uh, now this thing is actually renderable because it's a uh, mesh, right? That actually has thickness and all this. Um, okay, so th there are a couple things we could do here. First of all, I don't like how tall these hills are and these are all things we can uh, edit. So let's talk about that. I don't like how tall these hills are. You know, it would probably hurt my thighs trying to climb up this. Uh, so let's take this and we're just gonna multiply it by a number. So when we multiply it by one, nothing changes, but as we get closer to zero, we're making them more gradual. So we can actually also control that about it. So I'm going to make these holes a bit more gradual. Um, and additionally, I want them to look kind of pixelated because right now they're super smooth. Um, so here's a, a tiny trick that I found for doing this. So we have the position. We've basically made a math equation, a formula to reset the position. If we take all this and then just send it through a snap function, which basically means snap it or round it to the nearest, you know, I mean, I guess we pick. Uh, you can see how this is kind of becoming pixelated because the X, Y, and Z uh, locations of each uh, coordinate is basically getting snapped to some like grid size, if you want to think about it that way. Either way, let's make this nice and accessible. So I'm going to take one divided by some number. The bigger this number is, kind of the more resolution we got here. So I'm just going to keep pushing this up until it has roughly the look I'm going for. So maybe 50. Um, so here's the before. Whoops, before. And after, it literally just kind of quantizes the uh, look. It's not going to be perfect. Like, there are going to be kind of diagonal segments because even though there are each point's on a grid, the connection could still go across a diagonal. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that. This looks a lot more, like, natural already. And you're not going to notice since it's shifting. So we've made uh, the first thing. Uh, now let's just make these uh, particles that are going along the floor, which is actually much easier. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of like the stupid way. There might be a way to kind of save on memory and all this, you know, like not adding extra vertices, but I'm going to do it the dumb way, which I recommend. So uh, first, we're going to add in a grid. This grid is basically, you can think of it as a bounding box. So I'm just going to kind of shift it with a transform and all this. I'm just going to put it roughly where I want my particles to be. And I can change the size like that. So as this ground is sweeping, I want particles to be here also sweeping. I'm going to make this bounding box, and uh, now we just want to spawn in some particles. So first order business, distribute. Oh, actually, we didn't do a victory music before. We actually finished the ground. There we go. <laughs> um, particles, distribute points on faces. So now this grid has a bunch of points distributed across it. And uh, for each of these, I want to spawn in a little grid pixel particle. Um, so we are going to instance on points just like that. What are we going to instance? We're going to instance the grid. Hopefully this all makes sense, right? 
I'm just um, copying over a bunch of rectangles, if you want to think about it that way, a bunch of pixels here, um, to get this kind of look, is the idea. And we're going to make it, you know, uh, not overlap, and some of them are longer, we're going to make it look good. So, uh, let's make them not overlap. Uh, to do that, we just need to fix how these points are distributed. Instead of randomly just putting them on the plane, let's use a Poisson. <laughs> It's like a Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron would be like, can I can I have a p -p -p Poisson? <laughs> Either way. Uh, Poisson disk. What it means is it's the same thing as before, but we have this extra slider here uh, that we can increase, and it's going to get rid of any overlapping. It's going to say, don't spawn two particles within some minimum distance. So something like that. And in fact, since we need a bunch of particles that are going to like sweep over, I think another thing I'm going to do, again, this is where it's not going to be that optimal, but whatever. I'm just gonna increase the size of this grid by a lot, let's say like 100. So we have particles spawning all the way across, a lot of extra to use, and I'm just gonna slide this over so that we start roughly here. And uh, we're gonna have this like animate like this as we go, is the idea. Um, okay, so we have a bunch of points. Um, let's randomize their size so some of them aren't square, you know, they're rectangles. Uh, we could do this with a random value, and we're gonna hook this up to the scale, which is what's gonna control that. So random value, hook it up to scale. Uh, we're going to make it a vector so that we can control X, Y, and Z individually. And what I want to do is I'm going to set these all to 1 so nothing happens. What I want to do is I want the maximum X to potentially be higher. So some Xs are going to be close to 1, and it can go up as high as 5, or let's say 4. And this is going to give us some like stretching variation. And if we want to stretch the other way uniformly, uh, we can do it like this. Nope, that is not how you, that's the size of the bounding box. I mean like this. There we go. But uh, I think this is looking correct. So, okay, so we have the ground moving. It's pixelated, and we also have the ground pixels, but they um, they themselves aren't uh, moving. So we need to transform them the same way. Uh, so we did this instance on point. So we have a bunch of rectangles. Now let's take this and translate. And I guess there are a couple ways of doing this. So you could either transform the whole system or you could translate the instances. I don't think it matters too much in this case. So I'm just going to do it like this. And remember, we already have this uh, function from before. We have the time, the combine XYZ, uh, that is for the translation of the noise texture. But we can hook it up here. So let's see. Almost. <laughs> it's going the other way. I actually knew that would happen. I did. I really did. Uh, so take this. Uh, we're just going to flip it. So we're just going to do a vector math and uh, multiply it by negative one on the x-axis. And this will make them go the same direction. This is because uh, it was correct, except it was going, let me go back to the first frame, except it was going the other direction. So we need to take our x animation over time and just like flip it, multiplied by negative one. And now these are going the same way. Okay, cool. Uh, only issue is, you know, it looks fine and we could even adjust it even more, but I don't want to see the particles on the side. It should be kind of limited to the any area uh, beneath their curve. Um, so kind of quick hack. Not a great hack, but a quick one, is we're just going to make a bounding box using a cube. So I'm just going to show this cube. I'm going to make it the size of the um, the curve segment. And I'm just going to make it this big. I'm going to say only keep the particles that are within the size of this uh, cube, basically. And we're going to do that with a Boolean. Now, if you try to do a Boolean, and we're going to set it to intersect, but if you try to do a Boolean, right, you connect both of these and you set them to intersect. So it's only going to keep it where it's in the box. You're going to see it's not working. You're going to think why. You know, you're you're going to go down a whole spiral. Maybe you'll pick up drinking or something. I don't know. It's going to be an issue. Uh, the 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 way you solve this is you actually just need to add a realize instances node. The reason for this is we have particles that yes are moving and all this, but it's not actual geometry, right? Because we just instanced a bunch of stuff, right? If we were to send this through the viewer, you can see we have two hundred or three hundred and twenty two instances. Whereas when we realize it, we just have a bunch of geometry, a bunch of vertices, faces, whatever. And you need this geometry data to run a mesh boolean. Either way, so now let's see what we got. Let's do it in solid view. There we go. Um, and, you know, we can kind of control, not kind of, we can definitely control the look of this. So what's the density I want for this? Do I want it to be sparser? Do I want the overall pixels to be a bit tinier? Uh, we, we can change all these things. I'm not going to like fine tune it here, uh, but this is the basic idea. I think final thing is let's kind of get the look down since we want the white background and this to be black. So we could just do that now. Uh, for that, world background, make it white. So when we view this, it's white. And uh, for all our objects, so we kind of joined everything. And then at the very end, I'm just going to give it a whole material or one material to use everywhere. And uh, for that material, uh, let's just make it black. So shader editor. 
go to the material, it's called material, I'm just gonna call it maybe gray instead of black, so you can see that's applied here. And for that, I'm just gonna use an RGB node, I don't want any BSDF stuff, and we can control kind of the brightness, the color if we wanted to, so we can make it like red or whatever, which is kind of a cool look, but let me desaturate that. I'm just gonna pick something that's not black, but maybe a shade of gray. So that looks pretty good. Um, so I either wanna also make the pixel smaller or this curve thicker, since they kinda don't match, so we could do either. I think it would probably make more sense to make the pixels a bit smaller, 0 0.03. There we go. Just to get kind of a uniform look. So uh, you can see um, it's a lot of nodes, but when you actually go through it, you know, in order, it makes a bit of sense. So victory music. Yes, we did it. Um, we made the ground. So I think this is roughly, you know, 25% of the project. It is kind of not the complicated part, but there, there's a lot of work done here. So it's not like we did nothing, but okay. We'll, we'll, we'll continue uh, in the next uh, tutorial. So hopefully that this made sense and you learned something. Um, at this point, I just want to mention Patreon, it exists. Um, if you want to get the final blend file with all the nodes nice and convenient and like frames and node groups and all this, um, of course that's going to be available once I upload this. Also early access to, to uh, tutorials and all this. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. You get exclusive tutorials or whatever. There's like hundreds of blend files because I've had Patreon for like two to three years, right? So there's a lot of projects I've uploaded there. Check it out if you want to support this channel or uh, the CG Matter channel. That's also the best way to do it. It is the most direct way to do it. Uh, so whether you want to do it for that or just the blend files, that's cool. Either way, uh, thank you all 700 patrons. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, that's it for me.